Alright, today we are going to be going through a basic overview of connecting your Trimble R2 device and going through some basic data collection in the field. First you'll start in the settings page connecting to your Trimble R2 through Bluetooth. Once you've connected to that, I like to check and make sure that you're connected to your Wi-Fi as well for good signal out in the field. Next, let's take a look at Trimble Mobile Manager. We can open up this application and connect to our Trimble R2 through it. GNSS configuration page is where you will input all of your information. We use NTRIP to connect and get signal. Every, everyone's connection page will be different. You can also find the status of your device along with a list of your connected devices. On the home page you can disconnect from your R2 before opening up field maps. For some reason field maps wants to be the one to open up the application instead of connecting to it while it's already open. Next we can open up field maps. You'll find your login screen. You can go ahead and put your ArcGIS login information in. Once you sign in, you should find your maps page. This is kind of your home screen for field maps. In the top left, you have your profile in which you'll find a bunch of different options for settings. I like to go here and open up collection settings and set everything that I need in here. Accuracy is a big one. I like to set it at, at six inches where the device will not shoot any points that are above six inch accuracy. I have GPS averaging set at five. You can do one, you don't need the GPS average, but I find it helps with signal. In your location provider, this is where you will connect to the Trimble R2. You can make sure you have your antenna height correct and then connect to your device. This is where field maps will open up Trimble Mobile Manager and connect to your R2 through that application. Going back, we can look at our profile and we will go ahead and add a new location profile. And I can kind of walk you through that process. Everyone's coordinate system will be different. I will go ahead and input mine and you can find your own and go through this process yourself. For the map extent, I just like to zoom in to a general area that I'll be working in. It doesn't need to be very precise. After that, you can choose your datum transformation and then hit done. That should be the last thing you have to input. You can give your profile a name and then once you've done this and save it, you can find your location profile in your list of other profiles. If you start adding a bunch to this list and you get confused about which one is which, the little information icon on the right there will allow you to see what settings you have for each location profile that you have on your list. Back on the main profile page, if you scroll down, you have a lot of different options. The main one is sign out at the bottom there. You can That's where you'll go and sign out. Your units, I always make sure that this is at US standard. I think typically it's always set to automatic and I have to go in and manually change that to US standard. That should be all you need to change in your settings page there. And now we can go and find the folder that will contain our map. Under the asset management webinar here, we have our data collection web map and this is what we'll be using for our dem demonstration. You have some different map options there if you hit the three dots or you can just tap on the icon there to open up the map for the first time. Once you open up your map, if you have all your settings input, 
it should automatically connect to your device and you can see our accuracy up there at the top. You can tap on that GPS accuracy to get some more options as well. As you can see, we've stepped away from the building here and our accuracy has gone down to a reasonable level. Here is the GPS details. Like I said, hitting the accuracy button at the top there. This gives you all the information that you need about your device while you're out in the field. Battery is a big one. You can see there we're at full battery, but you can go there to keep an eye on it as you get lower. On the top right, you have your layers button. This is where you can turn off and on different layers that you have in your map currently. As you can see, as we flip these toggles, the features that are in those layers automatically disappear from our map. In the top right, we have just some other options that you can scroll through. A big one is edit multiple. Hitting that button allows you to select multiple features from the same layer and then add it or edit those at the same time. As you pan around, you can always hit the location button at the top right to snap back to your location with your Trimble device. In the bottom right, you have your collect data button. This is where you can go and find all your features that you are allowed to add. If you select a feature, it will automatically average five locations with your Trimble device. And then you have the option to immediately go in and add any attributes that you need to after you've averaged your location. Here I will just run through some adding some basic attributes either by typing in or we have created some drop downs here under that domain field. Once you've input all of your attributes, you can open up your collection settings here if you need to. If you don't need to change any of that, you have the option to submit up in the top right, or you have the cancel button in the top left there if you didn't like your accuracy for that collection. After you've collected a feature, you should see your options for that feature on the left there. And you can go in and edit the feature if you need to. Selecting a feature on the map should open up the ability to see all of your attributes on the left side there. You can see we automatically see our accuracy that we shot the feature at. And then you have the option to go back in and edit any information that needs edited or updated over time. Once we've done that, we can close out of that point that we have selected there. As we move around the map, you can see that our little icon there follows pretty closely to wherever we travel as we prepare to collect a new feature, we can click on the collection button and now we'll start collecting line feature. Again, automatically starts averaging our position as soon as we click on the feature that we want to collect. With line features, they're a little different than points. Every time that you average a position, it is automatically placing a, a vertice there. And then you have the option to continue to average different locations, and it will continue to create new vertices as you do so. As you can see, our accuracy continues to be at about an inch, so we'll continue to collect points. If our accuracy was to jump up to Anything over our collection settings, six inches, we, it would automatically pause averaging and it wouldn't continue until we regained good accuracy. Now that we've collected three vertices, 
we can go into our settings there on the right and choose to delete a selected point if we need to, along with some other options. We can open up our collection settings here as well, as we did on the main page through the profile. Here I want to note the streaming option here. This is for line features. You can choose a time or distance. And if you stream, when we have it set at 10 foot distance, every 10 feet, we it'll automatically create a new vertice as we walk. So we start streaming there. And you can see we have the option to stop streaming. But since we're currently streaming, as we just walk, we don't have to worry about averaging or anything like that. Field maps will automatically create a new vertice for us with our GPS one inch accuracy every 10 feet that we move. As you can see, we create six vertices there just by walking. And then we can stop our streaming and submit our feature. And we should have our updated line feature there. Now I can kind of show you how to update existing features as we move over here. We'll go ahead and select this line feature that we have. Once you hit the edit, you have the option to select different vertices by tapping on whichever one and it'll highlight whichever one you want selected. Once you have one selected, you can choose to update select point and that will average and shift that vertice to your current location. You can submit that and we have successfully updated this line feature that was already existing. Now we'll move over here and we can do the same thing with this example point. We'll select our example point and we can choose the edit option and even though this feature has been existing before we opened up this map, we can still go in and edit the attributes. Hitting the location button on the top right there, we it snaps to our position and then we can start averaging. Now panning around with just our finger, we can update the point. And this isn't doing anything with the Trimble, but just kind of moving the point around. And now we have the option to snap back to ourselves after we've already moved the feature again. One last thing, if you ever need to for any reason, you can hit the arrow on the top left, exit out of the map, and then hit the three dots to reload the map if you're finding any Anything not showing up or not updating automatically, you can do that. I found that to be a useful tool at times. Other than that, that should be everything that we need to go over here. Thank you for watching.